Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Patrick Quirk. He is the Chief Technology Officer of Nautilus Data Technologies. Patrick, welcome. Thank you, Buffy. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's so great to be here in the beautiful French Riviera yeah, uh, no for kidding. Data Cloud Global Congress. Tell viewers a little bit more about Nautilus in case they don't already know. Sure. So at Nautilus, we're a, we're a technolo cooling technology company. We have a base technology that allows us to remove the bulk heat from data centers. It's designed for scalability, environmental sustainability, and growth in the AI center from a density perspective as well. And you made some big news lately. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of those announcements, specifically the START campus and what makes that landmark so significant. Yeah, we were super excited about that one. That was a, um, the Start Campus folks have designed a really innovative campus. Um, they, they're they converting a, a former coal-fired power plant on the Atlantic coast in Portugal into an industrial facility that's utilizing the existing seawater intake and discharge that was part of the coal-fired power plant. They're adding in a potentially a liquid natural gas regasification plant that generates cold energy. And then 500 megawatts, nearly 500 megawatts worth of um, data center capacity. And then creating a essentially a, a closed loop system where they can utilize the heat that's generated, the waste heat that's generated from the data center, and be able to use that in industrial processes and offset the uh, cold energy that comes from the regasification of liquid natural gas. So it's a very innovative campus yeah. solution really addressing um, you know, the kind of the future sustainability needs for Portugal. And it ties in with a, um, you know, kind of a large cable landing station that's coming in. So it'll be a communications hub as well for that part of Europe. Um, so what we ended up doing with them was uh, they had some existing customers that needed higher density cooling. So in the first phase, we're retrofitting some of their existing data halls with our technology to be able to support higher density customers, AI, in particular, it's AI customers. And then the second phase of the agreement is as they start expanding that campus and growing it up to that 500 megawatts, uh, working with us to pre uh, put our eco core modules in, which I'm sure we'll be talking about here in a minute, yeah. put our eco core modules in as part of the overall project as they build out to that 500 megawatt campus. So speaking of the EcoCore uh, solution, why don't we dive right into that? Why don't you tell viewers a little bit more about the EcoCore solution and how it supports the advancement of next generation data centers? Sure. Um, the simplest way to think about EcoCore is its data center as a product. Uh, there have a lot. There have been a lot of people that have done uh, modular technologies for deployment of data centers over the last 10, 15 years. The limitation, though, is that they're they're typically a single function. So you can have a, a cooling module or a power module, or you can have a containerized type solution that provides the whole thing. But you know, in those cases, they're, they're limited in their ability to scale. So what we try to do is based upon our existing cooling technology, which is all water-based, um, runs under a vacuum, so it allows us to distribute it in the data hall without concerns for the IT gear. Because of that, we're able to we were able to design a modular solution that is fully integrated and includes all the power distribution, the cooling distribution, the network trays, the power bus bars for connecting up into the equipment, and essentially is everything in a package built at a factory. We ship from those units down to wherever the site is, and they can be installed over the course of a week or two, and you basically have data center as a product. It's a lot like a Lego block building project, if you could okay. think of it. And so that, you know, kind of the base design at whatever the location is, we come in with the modules and, uh, you know, well over 70% of the work is done in a factory. So you increase quality, it increases speed to market, and it provides a lower, uh, lower capital cost. And then with our technology, you then have the lower operating cost and a more sustainable solution uh, going forward. And if I can just make one more point about it. Sure. The, uh, the other aspect, and, and a lot of people miss this in sustainability, you know, everyone thinks about what is your carbon footprint or they, right. they focus on maybe one particular element of it, but really sustainability at its core is about efficiency, but it's not just power efficiency. You know, how can you be efficient in your use of space? How, you know, if you build it a higher density on a smaller footprint, 
you're going to use less concrete. You're going to use less steel, less copper. All those things contribute to the sustainability of the overall solution. And that's what we're bringing to the market with EcoCore. Well, congratulations. It's definitely a much needed solution. And when we talk about sustainability, what considerations sustainability wise uh, should data center operators be thinking about? Yeah. So particularly in this age of AI, right? Yeah. I mean, we all joke about the chat GPT moment, right? right. But the chat GPT moment happened and the, and the industry woke up to the fact that really we had been at an average power density per rack of about six to eight KW for 15 to 20 years. And with the advent of these AI solutions, now suddenly we have customers coming in that want 30K, 60K, 100KW per rack. And so that density curve has really radically changed now. And it has a lot of implications for how you can sustainably maintain a data center, right? Every article you read, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, uh, New York Times or pick up, pick up whatever newspaper it is, the public is hearing about AI as this great solution but at the same time, it's this, you know, it's Darth Vader, right? <laughs> They're going to eat all our power. They're going to destroy our sustainability and destroy the ecology. And so from a data center operator perspective, that key is, can you design a sustainable solution right from the beginning? Can it be efficient? And what are you going to do with all the waste heat that you're generating? So, you know, we've, we've been working with as many people in the industry as possible to design solutions where we are part of the infrastructure. A data center is a part of that total ecosystem, not just an independent thing that's drawing all this power and generating all this heat. Start Campus that we talked about earlier is a great example of that, where they've built kind of a circular solution for the entire campus. And as we go forward, there are a lot of regulations, particularly here in Europe, is kind of leading the way on you know definition of how, how uh, efficient the data centers have to be. And there's a mandate that that waste heat be reused. And you're starting to see that increase in more yeah, and more countries. Going. Definitely you are seeing that more and more. And it's so critical. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you wanted to add today? Uh, there's so much going on here at this Data Cloud Conference. There it's, is. Been, it's been fantastic. Totally. The, you know, the keynote speakers were hitting on, you know, key sustainability arguments and how AI can be part of the sustainability solution. And we shouldn't look at those two things as being opposed. And so I think that that general message is, you know, kind of where the industry is going, but there's still things that we need to do better, right? And, you know, we can always continue to innovate and we can always continue to, you know, kind of look for that better solution. And this is a, we're, we're at a great inflection point with AI and the density increases, but we're also at a great inflection point for the sustainability of data centers going forward. And that's so important, especially, as you know, JSA's Greener Data Initiative Absolutely. Uh, that we're here promoting I'm as halfway well. Halfway through the book. Yeah. And, and what do you think of it, it so me. far? Oh, it's been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's our pleasure. We actually gave uh, 40 students uh, today, the talent and tech students, a copy of the book as well. Right. Uh, we have them here by our booth, stand number 19. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You so much. Uh, for viewers, where can they go if they want to learn more about Nautilus? Go to our website, nautilusdt.com. NautilusDT.com. Viewers, thank you for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV live from Data Cloud Global Congress in the beautiful French Riviera. Thank you again for tuning in. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.